Welcome to another wearables teardown here at Adafruit. Today we're taking apart the Moto 360 smartwatch. This Android Wear device has a round screen for all of its notifications, controller functions, and other apps. It charges inductively using the included cradle. There's a lot of complex design and engineering in this thing, and we wanted to get a look at it firsthand. The band comes out easily enough, but the main electronics are glued together tightly. We'll use heat to soften the adhesives by making a DIY hot pack from some scrap fabric and rice. Pop it in the microwave for a minute and leave it on the watch for another two or three. Under the back sticker is the heart rate sensor, and a little prying gets us access to the inner puck of electronics containing the main PCB, battery, and induction charging coil. Oops. We found a shield over the main PCB and used a hot air rework station to get it out of the way. Yay! Thanks! Now that we have access to all the ICs, let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the design of the board. Alright, thanks Becky. Yeah, I'm going to be here talking about what's going on inside the Moto 360. This is like a jam-packed watch. This is like kind of intense. They basically like crammed a phone into a watch, which is pretty amazing, um, the technology they did. But I'm actually going to start by looking at the charger, just because it's a little bit simpler. And there's this charger that, you know, you put the um, Moto 360 on and it's like all elegant and stuff. And it's, it's, it comes like this. You take it out and then there's this coil here. Um, with a driver board and actually this looks a lot like um, the key charger board that we have you can see that coil is very similar it has a little bit more smarts to it than most inductive charging like it'll know that you're charging it'll know how much current it's drawing and stuff so on the other side you need the receiving coil and that's a lot like uh, you know this guy over here let me pull this off so you can see it's a very thin coil so it's a little bit similar like that but they they custom wound it there's this little flex pcb as well that they made custom and this is kind of neat because it's actually have, has a sensor system on the back i'm gonna look on the overhead right now because it's very small there was um there was like this sticker like plastic overlay thing that went over it but for the most part it's it's pretty much just like out there and exposed um, and there's a rubber gasket just to protect against moisture. So here we can see um, there's a bunch of sensors. This is like a photodiode of some sort. It's kind of a big photodiode. And then there's a couple of red LEDs, it looks like. So these are, you know, red, green, blue LEDs maybe. And then a photodiode. And this is for the um, pulse oximetry capabilities of the Moto 360, which can do uh, heart rate detection. It does that by shining light onto your skin and then um, your skin absorbs or reflects the green or red or whatever color uh, light wave, like the single wave, and it bounces back different amounts depending on how oxygenated your skin is. So it's kind of smart because they have this coil around that does the key charging, but then they have this gap in the center, so they stick the sensors in there. So that's the, the bottom of um, the watch, and then there's a little uh, flex connector that connects to the main body. All right, so now we're finally on to uh, Big Bertha, the main board. This is a massive board. It is like, there's like 25 chips on here. A lot of TI chips, I noticed. So they probably got a deal with TI where they said like, hey, you know, we'll buy most of our stuff through you if you give us a deal or you, or you customize the chips in some way. This is the back. And there's um, a little motor here. You can see um, there's a motor with these little D-shaped things. There's a buzzer motor. This is the vibration motor on the back. A little chip here might be this is a driver chip or something and then um, over here this is the M651 uh, I actually looked this up and um, I couldn't find the exact part number but uh, you know according to iFixit this is uh, the Invincent 6051 uh, uh, six axis accelerometer gyro there's no magnetometer which is good because having a magnetometer next to a spinning motor is kind of like messed up which is why at first I was like usually people put a nine axis um, uh, doff in there but in this case they didn't all right let's flip over and look at this big board. This board has so much stuff going on here. It's a little intense. Let's start with just the top biggest chip here. So you can see here there's a chip and then you can see there's a line underneath. So it's a package on package. So this is pretty common. This uses a, there's a TI processor inside. You've got the RAM on top and it sticks right onto the processor. It saves space. The chip is designed for it. Um, super fancy and then uh, right next to it is this other big chip and this is a flash chip whenever you have like a really big BGA chip with a lot of these like caps all around it right next to the main processor that's the flash and we looked up and it has I think like 512 megabytes of RAM and 4 gigabytes of MMC flash so yeah this is like a computer and then it's surrounded by a ton of chips all the way around let's so start over here 
the at the very north end. These are actually two uh, uh, Wolfson um, microphones. There's two microphones. I'm not exactly sure why, but there's one microphone that's top port. You can see the port up here. And then there's the other one that's a bottom port. And then if you look on the other side, um, that's where the gasket is for. So it, there's one microphone for like, I guess if you're speaking at it and one if you're speaking towards it. I'm not 100% sure why they went with two microphones, but did, they did. And then over here, um, this is a really tough to see flip chip, but this is um, Mysterious Logic CS53 53L30 quad channel microphone ADC. So this chip, uh, this processor doesn't have an ADC or maybe just a, it off, offloads the, the microphone processing. So um, this is the processor. So there's a lot of analog stuff here for the microphones. It goes into this processor here. And then this chip right here is a TI-1211. That's a, a USB Phi. So this processor also doesn't do USB on its own. So it has, um, a chip that does it. And then here, this is kind of a fun chip. This flip chip over here, it's, it says uh, WL18. This is a, a Y-Link chip. And so I looked this up, and this is a, another chip from TI. So you get, you're starting to see there's a lot of TI chips. And this chip is a kind of an all-in-one um, radio that does Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, and Wi-Fi. So it's like a basically 2.4 gigahertz, does it all. So it, they don't advertise that this does Wi-Fi, but it has the chipset to do Wi-Fi on it. And then over here, we've got the TMS320. This is a, a DSP, so this is a digital signal processor. It's kind of interesting because they have the ability to do um, digital signal processing, you'd think, on the TI processor, but they offloaded it. Could be maybe the main processor, you know, they, they want to use it for you know, user interface and the like high-level stuff, and they wanted to, you know, if they have to do some sort of processing with these microphones to, to take the signal and like subtract them or multiply them or like figure out where the sound's coming from, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, offloading it to a DSP, especially if they got a, a package deal, uh, it does take up a lot of space, so I'm sure that if they, they put it on there, they probably really needed it. So here is where the pulse oximetry sensing stuff comes in, the LEDs and such. And this goes into this chip, which is actually kind of hard to read. But yeah, but it's AFE4490. This is another uh, TI chip. It's a digital signal processor specifically for pulse oximetry. So this is like a very specialized chip. And, and then interesting, you know, they basically went to this chip and they, they, they plunked a chip down there to do all the pulse oximetry stuff and basically just feed the signal uh, directly to um, the processor. Over here is the MXT112S. Uh, it's not a TI chip. This chip is um, from Atmel. And the reason they didn't go with the TI chip is TI doesn't have a chip that does this. It's a cap touch controller. So on the, the display, bonded to the top of the display is this glass uh, patterned ITO, which you know you can basically use to do capacity touch sensing. And the final chip that I can identify after like much Googling is this is the BQ5105, and this is the Li Poly charger. So this actually does the Li Poly charging um, from the key. It's, it's especially designed for you know key coil to a Li Poly charger. Here's an all-in-one. So this is like a really good choice. So this is the one TI chip that I'm like, yeah, this is exactly the right chip to use for. Um, what you're doing. So the, that's a lot of chips and uh, I hope you enjoyed that chip party because there's like 30 chips on here and, and I have a list of all of the data sheets I could find. The one that was actually kind of a, a little bit of a mystery was why did they have a USB Fi? There's no USB connector on here. So it's, it's pretty amazing that they managed to get like good yields with this much stuff but it's Motorola like they know how to do this. Um, so if you're wondering like you know what it takes to make a watch that can do everything, this is it. For this and many other teardowns, we use the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand. What wearable tech do you want us to see take apart next? Post your suggestions in the comments and subscribe to catch the next one. Thanks for watching.